Hi, welcome to the Stitch TV show. I'm Lynn. And I'm Pam. We're happy you're joining us today. The Stitch, what? Oh, what? what? Hi, welcome back. The Stitch is an online quilt talk show, the perfect soundtrack for your sewing room. In addition to our talk shows, we also post tutorial videos, virtual stitch-ins, and book clubs. You can learn more at thestitchtvshow.com. Our show today is brought to you by our friends at QT Fabrics and Inmart. You can learn more about each of them in the links in our show notes. <gasps> yes. So we are once again joined by the lovely Radiance fabric. I love it. I do. What I love too is that when I saw this, I didn't think that it was Dan Morris because Dan does a lot of the designs for the novelty prints that QT has. Oh, right. And and in looking at it, I could see like particularly there's a flower shape right here that I'm like, I could see that. Good job, Dan. I, I just think it's got more depth than mm -hmm. like you want it to be, and I know we said this last time, you want it to be a batik, but it's not. And it just seems to have more depth yeah, than a batik has. It does. It's not as muddy. It's crisp. Yes. Does that make sense? It does. So, and of course, I, I'm in love with the colors, and I like the, the blender aspect of it. Mm, yes. I like that it really reads orange or it really reads pink, but when you get into it, there's the blues and the greens and the purples and the, you know, I just think it's cool. And it matches my shirt. It does. <laughs> Matches mine too. Not as well. Yours is better. So it's very vibrant. Very and speaking vibrant. of vibrant, we've also got the ultra bright iris poly uh, thread from Inmart. Yes, which this is the grape color, I think. <sighs> is it grape? I think that's what it is. See, grape is one of those things where I like the artificial flavor more than I like <laughs> real grape. <laughs> the actual grapes. I think it's related to my fondness for scratch and sniff stickers. <laughs> Well, as a child of the 80s. I do think grape candy is one of the better types of flavor for candy. Yes. But cherry's awful. Like, I won't eat cherry anything. Did you? So I may have... Um, cherry candy's nasty. Yeah. Ugh. Cherry cough medicine's nasty. Oh, that's why I don't like cherry candy, is because cherry cough medicine when I was a kid. Well, so I may have renamed one of their colors for them. Yes, I saw that. <laughs> it's where be. I I interpreted it. It was it said coffee and then TK on the end of the spool. It was like a like a caramely kind of color. And I'm like, ooh, I love that this is named Coffee Talk. <laughs> and then I looked at the thread card and I'm like, oh, it's supposed to be coffee teak. Hmm. But they apparently liked that <laughs> I renamed may, it too because yeah, they they're like, like this is a great name, Coffee Talk. Now we can start. Naming but they have colors. a color named Smurf, so you know there's some yes, exactly. fun right there, right. <laughs> I fit that Smurf. I, we already talked about that. So, um, so what are we uh, what are we going to be talking about today? Today we're going to be talking about die cutting machines and and why seams <gasps> and why ask why, but exactly. why seams. So we're joined today by our quilt pattern Belinda, and you can get the digital pattern for this layer cake friendly giant hexi quilt in our shop shop .com. So we are uh, still in the throes of finishing quilts for our upcoming show. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be like that's gonna be next like the next month. two episodes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> still quilting. Still kind of quilting. Still, still quilting. quilting. So I finished one of. So I I entered four. I have two finished. The other two, you know, need to be quilted. And one was like my twelve year UFO. And I'm like, well, this will just it give me right on the bandwagon to finish this thing. And now I'm secretly hoping it didn't get accepted, <laughs> so I don't have to finish it. I was like, please have accepted the smaller one. <laughs> so I'm going to work on the smaller one next. And it's my uh, my hand applique bluebird of happiness. And we'll ha we'll hang that behind us, Um, you know, when it's done. It ain't done right now. But I got to figure out the binding for that one. Well, I'm in the same boat as you. Like, I submitted two quilts. One is done. Woo! But that was our quilt that we did together with a couple of other friends that you all have seen on the show, the transform quilt with the goose on it. Um, I've submitted that quilt, so it's done. And then I submitted a quilt that's not done that I'm currently working on, too. So I'm with you on the whole, gotta get it done. So, still quilting. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> so, die cutting. Die cutting. Do you have a die cutter? I have, I have a, well, hmm. yes, I have a die cutter. I have an AccuQuilt die cutter, and I have... A Cricut cut mm -hmm. um, maker, which can cut a fabric. Mm -hmm. The original Cricut cuts I bought one of the very first generation Cricut cuts that you buy the cartridges for and everything. And 
was hopefully it could cut fabric. It doesn't cut fabric. It's very much paper oriented. Um, paper and vinyl too, I think. Yeah, I think it's yeah. vinyl. Um, so, but the Crick Cut Maker has a rotary blade as one of the knives that you can put in it, and that cuts fabric that you don't have to have um, fused. Like you don't have to put a glue on the back to stabilize it. Okay. So it'll just cut it, and you could still use it for needle turn or whatever. Um, so, yes, I have both of those things, and they're very different on how they work, I think. So, do you have a die cutter? Nope. I got a friend with a die cutter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I will tell you, and I also have the silhouette, the cameo silhouette, um, and I didn't like that for fabric. I thought it, they said it would be good for fabric, um, it turned out not to be. As I so. say frequently at my day job when I disagree with someone, well, my experience is different. <laughs> yeah. My experience <laughs> has been different for that. I mean, it's a good cutter, and it does vinyl and all those kinds mm -hmm. of things, but it's not what I wanted it it's for. It's not your preference for fabric. Yeah, it isn't. And I will say that I haven't used the Maker very much yet. I just got it not too long ago. Um, so I can't be an expert on that yet. But I do like the software so far mm -hmm. and that it interfaces with the AI Adobe Illustrator um, so I can send <laughs> sorry I'm used to AI being artificial intelligence <laughs> I'm like oh it connects to Skynet and it's going to take over and cut all your fabric for you right and yes. predict the quilt you're going to make next right that's mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> no um it doesn't do that no it doesn't do that when I said AI I meant the Adobe Illustrator files gotcha so I like it so far that where I've used it, but I'll have to give you an update later on. Because there's a big quilt I want to do, but I've put off doing. Because, again, we're quilting these quilts for the show. Yeesh. Yeah, so I haven't played with it as much as I'd like. I yeah. made a card on it the other day. There you go. They Ooh. sent you a sample to show you how to use it, and I did their sample, whatever. And it worked well. It was perfect. Cool. Worked great. Yeah, there are a lot more people out there with a lot more experience on die cutting um, with some amazing YouTube channels, too. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, definitely. Now, I will say that we have designed some of our patterns around some die cuts. I know I have um, for uh, the AccuQuilts. Mm -hmm. Oh, Time After Time, the table runner. Yeah, is a die cut pattern. Um, and it was the Hexies. And actually, it uses... This shape right here, which is an equal lateral, equal lateral triangle. Mm -hmm. So, and you put those in between the hexes, and that was what we used yeah. for the... Now, that um, being said, when we wrote the instructions, it was, here are options. If you have the die cut, you could use this die, or here's how you cut them out yourself, just regular rotary cutting. Absolutely. Knowing that I don't have a die cut. And I, right. I mean, I could have come and borrowed it, but I didn't... The the way that we write patterns, we don't ever want to limit people to specialty rulers or tools. Because or assume. Just, yeah. yeah, or assume. But if you've got them or want to buy them, because mm -hmm. I'm kind of a tool gadget person, so I'm the one going, let's use this tool. And she's always like, but we could do it this way. Yeah. So we try to make sure that everybody kind of has accessibility to it, mm -hmm. depending on how, you, how much you want to invest in it. Kind well, of thing. and it's... A mix of expense and real estate and how much time are you saving and if you how many times are you going to do that one right this is my only um negative for like some of the die cutting is you are limited to that that die you're investing in that die and it's only going to cut that shape yeah it's not flexible it's not flexible it's not you know side you know so well i need it to be eight and a half and not eight mm, sorry it's eight well, I mean, and that's the one of the limits of AccuQuilt. When it comes to the Cricut machine, it is more flexible because it's software-based. So you could right. size it up, but you're still limited to the size of the bed that the fabric can fit on for it to cut. And I will say that one of the negatives, too, about die cutting, I feel, is I don't care if it's manual or it's the electronic, like Cricut, um, there's a waste of fabric. There is, and that's always been one of my... Big reasons against, where I can be a lot more mm -hmm. 
efficient in terms of fabric use when I'm cutting triangle strips for time after time or when I'm cutting, you know, giant hexes for this. Like I can be right. mindful of how many I can fit in in one piece of fabric. And I don't I don't find that with die cuts and it frustrates me. Now, that being said, I have plenty of fabric. Like, you know, I'm a grown-up professional lady. I could afford to, you know, waste some fabric. But I want to be conscious of the waste that I'm generating and, and just... Right. The opposite side of that is mm -hmm. if you're a person who has any kind of carpal tunnel issues mm, with cutting, yes. man, die cutters are your best friend Yeah. Um, because it's going to do all the cutting for you and you're not going to put strain on your wrists and hands. So as much as I'm like waste of fabrics, a downside saves my hands. If I have any yeah. kind of those issues, stress issues, that's an upside. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think you can look at it both yeah. ways. I like die cutters, especially if it's repetitive. Like I need, and time saver, you have to admit, die cutters times are time save so much better than if you had to cut out, you know, 500 triangles, half square triangles already cut out. This thing can do it in less than a quarter of the time than it would take you to How do. many layers of fabric at a time do you do? Like on with the, an AccuQuilt. Okay, on the AccuQuilt, I think they say up to six. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong and for And that's that. about my limit for rotary cutting, too. Yeah. Because when you get more than that, things just start slipping. See, and... my, my for rotary cutting is four because mm -hmm. I do think they slip after four. Um, if I'm cutting squares, I'll do up to six. If I'm doing triangles, I limit it at four. Yeah. So... I think that's a benefit of die cutting, too, because you can do multiples really quickly um, and be ready to sew. So a lot of people don't like cutting, and this will let you cut. And and it lets you repeat, you know, and if you're the kind of person who loves to do the same pattern over and over and over again, then maybe die cutting is the way to go for you, too. Not necessarily, and I'm talking, there's another... Um, company out there and it's called Gemini and mm -hmm. Sissix, which we haven't brought up, but they are on the same type of cutters as the Accu Quilt is. So Gemini and Sissix are all manual cutters. Mm -hmm. um, now some of them have buttons you can press and it goes through. Yeah, versus having to crank or something. Versus having to crank it, yeah. So, but those are all die cutters that you would buy a die and then that's the size, and you would send it through. The Gemini was kind of cool. Mm. You and I saw that at market. Yes. Yeah, their dies weren't sort of big. We don't have them. Bed. I don't no, we don't. have one. But their, um, their dies are more, they just look like thin metal outlines of the shape that you're cutting. Right. And they're very lightweight, which I was attracted to just in terms of it storage. looked like it took less storage space yeah. than having individually like all these big dies that you have to run through the AccuQuilt. Yeah. And these... Just so you know what's in these dies, if you don't have one of these, these this gr dark gray shape, if I press that away, and I have to be careful, there's a blade. Mm -hmm. So, and the blade, this is pretty thick. Those blades are fairly thick so that when it goes down, it presses the entire die into, and you run it with plastic over it. So you would put your fabric in between here, and the plastic over it, and then it would press this foam down to hit that that edge. So that's what cuts it. And is so, this like self healing mat material? Yeah, yeah, it's self. And you use either side of it. Mm -hmm. You can tell it's had some. It's and then when love. it gets, yeah, it's got some love. And then when you get too many on here, you buy these. So these you buy new. Like if you've cut so much, then you'll need a new one. But they last a long time though. Yeah, much like. I wonder if Mats. you care for it much like you do just a regular cutting mat where you can yeah. soak it in warm, soapy water and, and oh, release yeah. some of the fibers yeah. out of it and bring it back to life. Yeah. Yep. So, but the Gemini was just these thin. Yeah. Mat. I didn't know how. And I was like, I don't even know if that's going to work. Is oh, this and magic? it totally did. It, it was, was not magic. It worked. It totally I mean, worked. maybe it was magic, but it worked. And the other one is Sissix. They have a, a die cutter, and it's the same principle as the Accu cut or quilt, Accu quilt. Um, it's got a thick die like this, and you 
I, I think sometimes you can buy, I forget which is which, but I think you can buy some dyes and run through the Sissix, but AccuQuilt can't go through Sissix or Sissix. One's thicker than the other, and they can't go through, and one can go through the other one. You just have to buy a base that mm -hmm. helps it. Um, but they're not they're not supposed to be interchangeable, but I think there's a way around where there's some of them can't. Yeah, there's a hack where you can't Refer to your manufacturer's instructions. Right. Now... That's for manual ones. For the, for the, for the computerized computerized ones, which are your um, silhouette brother silhouette cameo, and um, the Cricut. the make Cricut maker. Um, those you're still buying dies, or you're still buying files, but it's just electronic files that you send to it. That being said, you can create your own mm -hmm. and send a. Is it an AI or an SVG file? It's SVG file. It just took me a second. Yeah. So there is file. free software that you can use to design those. And that's actually something I had used until we upgraded to the Adobe Creative Suite. But there's a, for PCs, there's software called Inks, Inkspace or Inkscape. Uh, now I'm drawing a blank. Inkscape, uh, which is free software. And it's, it's not the most intuitive thing. Like if you're used to, let me just go draw something in Microsoft Paint. Yeah. Not at all like that. No. But it's not an insurmountable. Right. There's lots of good tutorials out there on how to use Inkscape. Uh, and that is a free graphics program that you can use to design shapes that you could then send to uh, be die cut on any of those machines. Right. So that makes it more flexible. That being said, it can only cut one mm. layer of fabric at a time. So the manual ones are very much better for I'm doing, you know, 30 blocks and it can cut all of the fabric much faster than a, yeah. you know, I look at the, the Crick Cut Maker and the Brother Silhouette Cameo as very much a more specific. I bought it to do art quilts. Mm -hmm. So I'm wanting to do a whole different technique with it where it's going to cut out some really interesting shapes, not like standard half square Here's triangles. a square. So, yeah. <laughs> and for that, I would use the Accu quilt yeah. that I have. Um, so, and we have honestly, you know, looked at some of the dies and gone, okay, how can this fit into, yeah. so that we could make a recommend, it doesn't, it doesn't guide our design aesthetic, but it's a consideration of, can another tool be used to create this quilt? Mm -hmm. You know, I've always thought of it that way. I don't know if you have. Yeah, I think yeah. having more options than less is beneficial, particularly, right. you know, when you're selling quilt patterns, because everyone has their preferred tools. And, you know, you don't want to have to force someone to buy a specialty ruler. I mean, unless for our case, because we don't design a lot of rulers. Um, right. But I could definitely see, you know, when you look at um, specialty, like creative grids, and they've got patterns that are developed to go with all of their specialty rulers. Right. Uh, and that works for them. But that's not where we're coming from as, as quilt designers. Right. Right. So I I think they're great uses for die cutting. And, um, you know, if you're doing multiples of the same thing, the those types of manual die cutters are great. Mm -hmm. They're absolutely great. But if you're looking for more stuff, specialty, small, intricate, you know, one layer, then I did think it was funny. So we went to the Crick Cut Maker conference or something in Atlanta. I drug her to it. She was not impressed. Well, it was <sighs> it wasn't it was our not my particular jam. Yeah. I could see the appeal of it, but I did leave and want to go make like a lot of custom t shirts, but <laughs> I didn't so <laughs> So they had this one so you went through two different classes. And so one of the classes was very much geared towards vinyl and paper and creation from that standpoint and then the other class was geared towards sewing and they were really showing how the crit cut maker could cut fabric and so they gave us all <laughs> i didn't think this is so they gave us all this fabric and we were to put it on the maker and have it cut out the fabric it cut out a like inch and a half strip <laughs> like it was not <laughs> showcasing the full capability of the machine because it was like six by inch and a half fabric. And I'm like, really? 
cool. I would never do this. We're like making this. little keychain fobs. So I, I get the they, I get this. They tr- they needed a project that people could finish. Right. In in the class the amount, amount of time. time. <laughs> yeah, we were like. I would never. It has cut so them. much more potential. <laughs> like you did not impress me with the potential of this machine by having me cut out an inch and a half inch strip. And so. that being said, we totally use that key fob now. It's on the spare key for my car. Mine has been using it all the time. So, good job. <laughs> um, and I understand why they had us do that, but I have to admit, I went. I would never use this machine for that ever. Oh yeah, I want to like, use it for like weird, complicated shapes. I don't want to have to cut out by hand, like right. curves. Right. And I want to pull in my fanciness. And this is what I will do. Like, I've got a picture, and I want to cut, I want to pull in, I manipulated that picture in Photoshop, posterized it to where I've deemed how many colors are in it. I want to then send, I'm going to layer the picture and then send to the cutter, cut out all the shapes that are that color from that picture so that I can recreate it in fabric. That's my goal. That's much more interesting to me than, and but not doable in an hour and a half. No, class. no, no, no. no. <laughs> yeah, you would never be able to do. Yeah, because I think you guys have seen some of the, like, um, like I'll take pictures and I'll manipulate them in Photoshop and make portraits and stuff like that. And so, <laughs> but not impressed with how they showed us to use it. But that being said, I did end up a year later buying one. So now we're going to take a closer look at Belinda, Belinda, and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back, and now we are going to talk about why Y seems... Or partial seams. Oh, that's right. I yeah. find there to be a lot of trepidation mm. about both of these things. I think so. And I also admit to having a fair amount of fear until I just did it. And then you realize, like, oh, in both of these cases, you're still sewing a quarter-inch seam. You just stop before you get to the end of the fabric. Right. <laughs> and it's literally that simple. Yeah, it is. Well, yeah, it is. It is. It is. So why seams are when instead of uh, an intersection where you just have two seams coming together or four pieces and there's like an exact corner grid uh, where there are three pieces coming together. Like what's behind us. <laughs> Here would be an example. Ta-da. Ta-da. And for beginners that want to dive into this, and really I do recommend beginners just dive in and not read a whole lot about it because then you'll there's just a lot of FUD, as we say, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. <laughs> I didn't know that's what we said. Okay. Well, no, we don't say that. That is a that is common in my day job <laughs> okay. in cybersecurity. Like, there's a lot of FUD out there. FUD. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Like, don't Google like it. That. Just dive in and start doing it. Right. And for beginners, I recommend, and even people that are maybe been away from it a while, um, mark, just mark your little corner. Because when you're sewing a Y seam, you're sewing a quarter inch from the edge to a quarter inch from the edge. So you leave your seam allowance free. It's not stitched down, and it'll become apparent in just a minute uh, why that needs to be. And there are a lot of templates that are out there, and we've got one under the camera now. Uh, This particularly is called the Sew Easy template, and this came with a number of sizes. And what I like about this one, not only the variety of sizes, but that there are corners drilled out in there. And that's where you use just a little pen uh, or pencil, your marking tool of choice, uh, and just mark on the very back of the piece of fabric, like where that quarter inch is from the edge. Poof. Poof. Now, now, if you don't have this template, you can use a ruler. Yeah. So you would just use a normal ruler and you would look at a quarter inch from each edge and then just draw a line and where that line mm-hmm. intersected would be. Because not everybody's using hexes. It could exactly. be um, diamond shapes. It yep. could be a lot of different types of shapes that would require a Y seam. So you could use just a normal ruler um, to mark that. Yeah. And now admittedly, when I did this one, I uh, in our pattern, Belinda, we give instructions for how to cut out the templates to just 
straight up trace this on your layer cake or even how to use a specialty ruler but then also you know how do you go in and mark that you know without this kind of fancy specialty template now where it comes in when you're actually stitching though if you want to put this under the camera okay after you've made all those marks now on here i will say for my sample i marked with a pigment pen so it would show up a little better on camera it's still a very small dot you want to use something that's not going to show through your fabric or a water soluble pen. So when you wash the quilt, assuming you're washing it, um, it's gonna come out. And you can just see, I've marked all those corners. And then when you just, you just start piecing, frankly. Okay, so do you start, I've, I've, there's a couple of different ways to do mm -hmm. this. I would start here. On the dot? On the dot and stitch out, mm -hmm. and then go back to here and stitch out. How do you do it? You are you are you back stitching to secure? Okay, that's a good that's a good thing. So if you back stitch, I start about a quarter inch, well, an eighth of an inch from the dot along the seam line, and then back up to the dot, and then go forward. That's how I did those. Okay, all right. If you start on the dot, don't back stitch until you've stitched some yeah. before you go back, and that will save you a ton of seam ripping. Seam frankly. ripping. As well as, think about it this way, too. Let's say you don't have a reverse or you don't want to backstitch. You haven't. There are some machines that will do a knot right at the beginning. You don't have that. Um, put Drop your needle right on the dot. Stitch two stitches. Pull your needle up. Pull the fabric. Scooch back to the dot. Scooch back to the dot and start stitching there again. And that's essentially like a back stitch. Mm -hmm. So that's another way that you can do it. Yeah. So, but you do need to secure your stitches at the yeah. beginning of the seam, or else they're just going to like yep, exactly. fritter apart. This is one of the key places. I don't always secure my stitches on a Y seam. You do. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And so, when you start stitching things together to make a Y seam, you've got three pieces. You start stitching two together. Right. You put them right sides together, just like any other time. And then you would stitch. And then you stitch along that, and then you flip it open. Now you have two hexes with, like, some flappy seam allowance. It's not that flappy. It's only a quarter inch. And then you add your third piece of fabric. So now you've got two of the three stitched the same way. Now, when you are adding that third piece of fabric, are you... Are you starting from where... It's already attached. You're starting from the other end and going towards the one. I'm attached. starting from where it's already attached, so that I know when I drop my needle, it's not on that bulky mm -hmm. side that I folded. Exactly, and that's when we talked about a couple shows ago covering up quilt mistakes. Yeah, that can be a real common problem with Y seams when you go to like reveal the front side of it when you're done, and, and there's, there's like a there's right like a here. weird pucker, and you're yeah. like, oh dang it. That's what you did. Yeah. So I, I agree. I usually also start uh, where the and existing fabric's already is, there. Okay, so what she's saying is if you can't see it. So this, I would fold this, the black, to where I know that this is the folded piece. So when I start stitching right here, I'm stitching this way mm -hmm. so that I know I'm not catching that fold. Because if you catch that fold you will see fabric, or you will see thread right there. Yeah. And that'll drive you crazy. It will. And that's when my first quilt, I didn't know what I was doing. That's what I was doing is I was catching, and I was back stitching into it mm -hmm. to secure, because I'd read you need to secure the seam. So you don't back stitch from that dot. You have to stitch forward before you back stitch. Or like you said, start further from that dot, backstitch to it, and then go forward. Yeah. Um, but don't, from that dot, backstitch onto the fabric you folded. So I hope that makes sense. But this will come into play on Hexies at um, Lemoyne Stars, where you do the yeah. setting for Lemoyne Stars, you'll see it. Um, Attic Window is another one where you have to do a Y seam. Um, uh, the... Lone Star, you do Y seams and setting of the Lone Star. There's a lot of blocks that you're going to run into this. Mm -hmm. um, so just don't be scared of it, you know. And practice with some hexes because I think once you get this down, you're going to get the concept down. Yeah. Now, when it comes to pressing, uh, 
usually on quilts, you know, uh, we're not going to get in the debate of open versus, you know, to the side pressing on quilts. But when it comes to piecing hexes together, um, my advice when you're making a quilt like Belinda or another and you're sewing hexes together is you don't press along the way because I found that got in the way. And what you end up with, so the example we've got on camera now, unpressed, we're going to show the pressed example here. And this gets into um, the principle of spinning seams, which is pressing to the side. And then what you get is this fun little tiny version of your quilt block, but on the back in the seam allowance. And so it's less bulk. Exactly. You pick you pick one seam and you press that one and that one direction then sets the tone for the, for the rest, rest of the, of the quilt. Nobody argues with that. <laughs> nope, you do not go against that. I mean, you can, like you could flip it, but then you just add some bolts. Do you think to a that's area. where going against the grain came? I doubt it, but. No. Just think. Not at all. I don't think so either. No. So you pick a direction and then you do your iron that way. And what I do is tend to iron all three seam allowances and then gently like finger press open that intersection and then put the iron on it. Right. And that helps it lay flat. And it's so less bulky. Like if oh, you yeah. can spin the seam, that's just perfect. Mm -hmm. And then when you're quilting, you want it to be less bulky for this very reason. When you're quilting and you're running across the, a seam, it's not going to, your needle won't get caught or break or... Yeah. yeah, I broke two needles this week, by the way. I had to order more needles. Hmm. Two on my long arm. I was just quilting away. <laughs> okay, now partial seams is another thing that can freak people out. And I have only really seen partial seams when it comes to things like basket weave patterns, where you need to join the fabric to get your starting piece and then you're adding onto it and then coming back and adding more to the other end of that. And partial seams is basically, it's usually, in my experience, when I've seen it, it's been regular like square pieces of fabric. It's not non-square shapes like this. There's 90 degree angles. And you just start stitching like normal and then you just stop. You're like, boop, and I'm partially there. I'm done, I'm tired, I'm gonna take a break. And you just cut your thread and then you carry on with your life, piecing the rest of the thing. So like partial seams are less scary even than Y seams. You just stop. I'm trying to remember the block <laughs> that I use partial seams in. And there are a few blocks that you do. It's not just that basket weave block. But I can't for the life of me remember what they are. Yeah. Sorry. I'm That's blank okay. right now. So, but yeah, partial seams aren't. you. The thing with partial seams is you just stop before. It's usually about an inch or two before you need to get to that next joining piece. Right. And the thing is, that joining piece has to come in before you can finish the seam. And exactly. That's it. Yeah. yeah. And that's why. And it's usually a straight seam, too, so it's not a big deal. It is less scary than I always seams. backstitch, just so that I know I've locked that down before I stop. That's a choice. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't. Well, no, because I don't on partial seams. and I mean, I could. There's Yeah, there's not a... No for or against it, but when I come back, I am not starting right where the, that is. Right at the end, you're I'm starting, starting a little bit before, which is essentially back stitching, just with yeah. a new line of stitching. So, yeah. I mean, either is is an acceptable choice, as long as you're not just adding so many knots in that one area that now you have a weird bulky spot. And you I tell. think the reason I back stitch is because I don't know when I'm going to pull that next piece in. If I'm doing a bunch at a time, you know, I'm changing you don't pieces want it to just, or whatever. Yeah. So I'm just locking it so it can be set aside before the next piece is ready to put in. I will look up the block that I used that on because there was a it was a more common block. Yeah, I've done it's it gone. like I said in basket weave. Then there was one right. block of the month program I did. That, that was, was like it. It was very... from a block of the month yeah. program, and it was a star, some kind of star. Yeah, it was like a weirdly specific. And yeah. I was like, eh, that's a better way for this. Yeah. But usually you're doing that in a in a point where, like, yes, you could join the same piece of fabric to uh, another piece of that same fabric. We use partial seams in the Diamonds Are Forever mm. um, layout. So we go over how to do partial seams in that pattern. Um, and it was a way to offset the, the two, the two um, the, the pieces quadrants. together. Yeah, the quadrants yeah. together. Yeah. So it was had to be done that way. So 
Very cool. Yeah. So it, it's it's not scary. And no. it does open up your options in terms of block construction. Now, there are ways to make Lone Star Quilt or Lemoyne Stars without a Y seam. Absolutely. And they're perfectly fine. And yes. if, it, if you're still terrified, by all means, use one of those alternate methods. I just think that if you get in your, you know, if you can market, um, also, um, either with these templates or you can do it with a ruler. You can always do it with a ruler. So how you would do it is whatever edge of your shape that you're using, you would just take a, a marker, you know, some water soluble pen or something like that, and mark a quarter inch on one edge, turn the ruler around and mark a quarter of inch on the mm -hmm. other side, and that intersection is your dot, Yep, essentially. Um, so that can be do, done on any shape. Yep. And that's how you find it. Once you find the dot, it's just dot to dot. Now for hand piecing um, Y seams, what I do, and this is Mickey Dupree's method, is I sew through the dot to the, like if I were, if I were hand stitching this, I, this is going to have a dot and this is going to have a dot and the pink's going to have a dot. So I would take my needle through the green and the black on the dot, and then my needle's here, so I would go back through the dot for the green and the pink. Needle's here, go back through the dot on the pink and the black, back to the original where I started, and then I would start stitching my line. So that I've, I have really secured that corner and that's how you do all the intersections on hand piecing. Mm -hmm. So you can do it machine or hand, but you still need the dots for either one. Yep. So very cool. Anything else? Nothing for me. All right. So Lynn, why do you think the chicken crossed the road? Probably to avoid Y seams and its <laughs> quilts. Would you risk traffic to avoid a partial seam? You can leave a comment on our blog or in the YouTube episode or in our Facebook group, What's Up Stitches. And that's all we have for this episode. So today's show has been made possible by InMart and QT Fabrics. You can find links to these wonderful companies in the show notes for today's episode. We'd like to thank 77 Peaches and Big Think Productions for helping produce this stitch. If you've enjoyed the show, please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell to turn on notifications on YouTube. So our next virtual stitch-in is Friday, May 10th at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern, broadcast live on our YouTube channel. Our next book club episode is May 24th. All those details and more can be found on our website, thestitchtvshow.com, along with links to purchase fan gear, quilt patterns, and video classes. Tune in next time for more Quilting Chat with Friends.